Hi, everybody. I'm Shirley Johnson. And I'm Jim Palmieri. We'd like to welcome you to The Job Show. Today, my special guest is Al Flagg, president of Herbesheimers. And my guest is Deborah Lohman, a student who recently graduated from Grand Rapids Junior College. Aside from our special guest, later on in the show, we're going to be featuring jobs that come into our office on a regular basis. All of this and much more coming up on The Job Show. I'd like to welcome as my guest today, Mr. Al Flagg, president of Herpesheimers. It's a pleasure having you on the show, Al. Thank you, Shirley. It's a pleasure to be here at the college and participate in this program today. Good. Al, I've recently learned that uh, Herpesheimers is a part of a dynamic and a very diverse retailing network. Would you share with us a little bit about your parent corporation and how Herpesheimers evolved up from it? Be happy to, Shirley. We're a division of Allied Stores Corporation out of New York. And basically, 80% of our corporate volume, and I think this year we'll do over $4 billion corporately in sales, will be done in our department store divisions. We have major units from coast to coast. Totally, we have about 500-plus stores. Then a new child in the group is the specialty store division. Some very exciting companies, and I think some of the finest specialty stores in the business, like Brooks Brothers for men's and women's, the Bonwood Teller Company, Garfinkel's, and Klein Shops, and there's a lot of, and Taylor Shops, excuse me, some very exciting specialty stores. They'll do the other 20% of the corporate volume. So we're proud of the new, the new family of specialty stores. That's great. One of the things that comes to mind when I think about uh, Herpesheimers is the phenomenal changes that have taken place over the past year. Uh, namely speaking, the physical setting has changed so much as has expanded due to the city set center uh, structure. Could you talk about the impact that that's had on the company? Right. About five years ago when I first came to town, City Center was brought up, and we were very excited about taking an old, too large downtown plant to a very exciting concept, which was known later as City Center. Basically, what we're trying to emulate is the water tower concept out of Chicago, what they've done with retail food services. And to make a long story short, thanks to UDAG, the federal government, the local government, and private enterprise, we were able to get City Center off the ground, as you know, last October. And it was a whole new image for Herpelsheimers. We're now going back to our old name, which is Herpelsheimers. And we've invested about $4 million in the downtown plant. So it's a very much upscaled store. We've eliminated areas like the budget store, the appliance area, so that we're almost a complete department store. But we think environmentally a very exciting store visually to shop. You'll see things like interior windows, very forward Art Deco mannequins with very classic mannequins. But the exciting thing is the upscale merchandise, which I think people have told us they love shopping down there. So it, it's trying to reflect itself in all of our stores. As you know, we have the field stores in Jackson, Michigan, one large store and two branches. And we have Herpelsheimers in Muskegon. We're in Battle Creek, Wyoming, and the downtown city center store. So we're trying to reflect this new upscaled career image in all the stores. I see. One, uh, I believe that the, that the retailing industry changes more rapidly than any other industry because of the nature of the business. I'm thinking about styles, trends, shifting economy. As a president, how do you respond to those changes? It's very exciting, but it's also very challenging. The retail business, as you know, is one of the most cutthroat and competitive businesses today because we're all trying to get the merchandise first and get it very, very quickly. We're opening a new item this fall season called the London Sweater, and it's basically a ladies' or juniors' one-size sweater that fits all, but a very elongated tunic. And whichever store gets that sweater first in town is just going to have a ball with it because it's a very hot 
fashion item. Last year, the hot item was the shaker sweater. Mm -hmm. And this is what makes our business a lot of fun, getting first with these items. So we're in the California market. We have our corporate buyers go to Europe and the Far East. In fact, every major company in the world to shop for us. And we go to New York for our regular corporate meetings where the buyers meet with their representatives and set out the strategy of buying for almost a year in advance with imports. So it's a complicated process uh, to be a buyer and to be a merchandiser in department stores today. I see. Along with uh, the idea of styles and trends, there's also a, a misconception about the, the retailing industry in that people see the uh, salesperson and they see the, the items on sale, but that's the extent of it. They do not see the uh, consumer credit line, the promotions. They don't see the the, the wide range of other occupations offered by Herpersheimers. Would you like to expand on that? Surely. There's so many divisions in the store that are behind the scenes. We have currently, I think, over 550 employees. At Christmas, we could go to seven or 800 employees. And every division in our store would be comparable to any other business. We have a sales staff, which is the merchandising division, right down to the sales associates. We have, of course, a personnel division. We have a operations or marking areas where we receive the merchandise, mark it, check it for size and color, then distribute it to seven units. We have seven stores. Uh, then, of course, we have a sales promotion department, which is our image projected to the consumer. It's everything we do on the television media, the electronic media, radio. It's what we do in newspaper, direct mail, and advertising, so that all of these are different divisions of the store. So then we have the last division would be the control division, which would simply be our financial executive, all of the people from the general ledger bookkeeper, paying the uh, accounts, receiving accounts, to the credit division, uh, to the statistical office, or whatever division is so broad, the auditors and everything involved, interior and exterior auditors too. Okay, are there opportunities for a manager trainees? Uh, for example, uh, a student has a degree in fashion merchandising or retailing a two-year associate's degree. Can he or she start in at a buyer's level or at what particular well, level will they come in? They would really want to come in and take advantage of our training program. We have clericals generally that we hire that are four-year college people. Now, if the person is very outstanding, we often make exceptions because we look at their credentials, their point of average, and really what their ambitions or goals are. So the best way would be for that young man or young woman to come in and really make the application to the stores. And uh, we have a central headquarters where we have an annual training program. And it's a management skills executive training program. Basically, we try to tell them what Herpelsheimers and Fields are all about, what our corporation parent company is, Allied Stores, but train them in the specifics of running our business. Many times these young people start as clericals. That would mean working for a buyer, assisting them in writing orders, visiting lines, uh, seeing new items or classifications, and then going from that position to probably an executive trainee, then to like an assistant or associate buyer, then to buyer. Those would be the steps, basically. How long is the training? The training program usually goes eight to ten weeks. We sometimes, because of the travel of our unit stores, double up sessions, but it's about uh, 20 sessions, and we can double them up sometimes. But it's basically management, leadership skills, personnel, control work, uh, merchandising, and some shopping assignments, and right down to some testing okay. of the people. So it's fun. For someone wanting to become employed at Herpesheimer's, from a president's viewpoint, what are some of the most important qualities or characteristics that you look for in a potential employee? Well, we look for people who are uh, willing to do more than what's required of them. We want people who really have a commitment to the retail field. There's so many areas a person can go into today and be very, very happy, whether it's profession, retail, whatever their fields are. And I think, surely, we really have to have 
a commitment that they really want the retail field because it's long hours, it's very demanding, it's a lot of pressure. But if you love what you're doing, all those things are unimportant. And I think just coming in and making an application at Herpelsheimer City Center or downtown is the way to get your name in the, in the hat. That's simply what we do. We usually go right to the on-file applications that we have okay. for people. I was just checking with our corporate personnel director, Elizabeth DeWitt, and asked her if there was anyone we were looking for now. I thought you'd be interested oh, in this. Oh, great. Right? <laughs> we're looking for a co-op student who could very well come from the junior college okay. here who can learn sales audit in Key Punch. Uh, this is a part-time position, but it could develop into more hours. And particularly, we're interested in someone who could work the summers because we do often have to replace vacations and so forth. Then our selling associates vary. Now, a month ago, we were looking for eight people in each store. We filled those positions. Mm -hmm. If Mary gets married and leaves tomorrow or becomes pregnant, we have I openings see. tomorrow. I so see. the big thing is to get the application in so that we can have the person's name on file and select from them when the openings occur. Great. On a closing note, Al, what is the future direction of Herpesheimers? Well, we're very excited about our career um, approach that we're taking in the stores and we want to continue to be very specialized in what we're trying to do. Mean a lot to that career man and woman who work downtown who I think could stay downtown if we made things very exciting for them. And we really want to have that as our focal point. A lot of emphasis on ready to wear and accessories mm -hmm. and the lines that we're adding I think will help us achieve this goal. But we're excited about the forward thrust. This is no different than any other Allied store is doing. Al, thank you for a very thorough orientation. I do appreciate your being on the show. Stay tuned for more of the job show. Thank you. All of us at the placement office at Grand Rapids Junior College are proud of the personal service we give to all applicants and employers. Students and alumni are the first priority for placement. However, our office is open to the public and we welcome all of you. Our professional staff will greet you warmly, interview you to determine your experience and needs, and if you're qualified, refer you by appointment to an employer. Employers who use our service will have their job orders file searched in our computers the same day we receive them. Our data bank of people contains more than 3,000 job seekers from all walks of life. All job orders are posted on our job board, which is seen by hundreds of people each month. All these services are provided by Grand Rapids Junior College at no cost to job seekers or employers. So call us today at 456-4838. I'd like to welcome Deborah Lohman, a recent graduate of Grand Rapids Junior College. Deborah has a degree uh, in business administration, associate degree. Deborah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, I know that you're an honor student because you and I talked a few weeks ago and, and uh, you ended up your three years here at JC. You took a little extra time to get through with a 3.92 average grade point average how does that make you feel very good <laughs> very proud and especially your parents too oh yeah a lot of work yes <laughs> I'm, I'm sure why well, is well, a lot of students coming uh, to school at JC or whatever uh, somehow or another get the idea that uh, an honor student doesn't have to work as hard but that obviously isn't the case I suppose there are some that don't have to work as hard but I do you did? Yeah. Uh, where did you go to high school I went to Allendale High School and you're living in Allendale yes and I also understand that you've been working out there in Allendale. Yes, I work in Holland uh, at Dynamic uh -huh. Design. Mm -hmm. And I work as a mechanical drafter and detailer. Now that's kind of an interesting, it's a part-time job that you've had for how long? For about two years now. And that's kind of an interesting job. Here you are in business administration and you're out there working in that particular uh, kind of a job. How did that ever happen? Well, I started in drafting, which um, is drawing mechanical machine parts is what I do. And then the next step was to go into engineering. Mm -hmm. But I discovered I didn't like engineering and now plan to go into management. Mm -hmm. So. Well, you know, that was one of the things I had mentioned before. Uh, uh, you took three years and took a few extra classes uh, in, in going to JC. And I think that's very typical, Deb. 
I think a lot of students start out here thinking they want something. In your case, it was engineering. But then after a short period of time, realizing that, no, that wasn't the right curriculum for you. And I see that as being rather normal and just kind of down to earth. How do you see that? I think it's normal. JC is a good place to, to do that, to find out if you like something or not. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I had decided that I liked engineering, and it wasn't the case after I took some engineering classes. I think I told you when we talked a little while back that I did the same thing when I went to college. I thought I was going to be an accountant, and it didn't turn out that way. I turned into or switched into business administration. Why did you pick JC in the first place? That was uh, some three years ago that you made that decision. Uh, why JC? Um, because JC is the closest college to my area, my home area, that offered a pre-engineering curriculum. Mm -hmm. And I felt it was a good curriculum for me to begin my engineering schooling at. Okay, but then you switch curriculums, and now you're in business administration. What kind of feelings did you have then at the time that you switched? Or going into <laughs> business administration, Grand Rapids Junior College, something must have made you want to decide to stay here. Well, I, again, I decided to stay here because I felt that it had the curriculum that I needed to uh, transfer to a university. You know, that's very important with a lot of students coming to JC that are thinking of transferring on to different colleges and universities. Uh, those credits are transferable. And I know in your case that you're considering, last time we talked, three or four different colleges? Four different colleges. Four, just give us a quick rundown on, on those colleges and where they're at. Um, East Carolina University right. is in North Carolina, and then Oregon State, Idaho State, and Colorado State. Now, why would you want to leave the beautiful state of Michigan? Well, because although I do love Michigan, I feel that going away somewhere else is part of my education as well as academically I need to learn things about different cultures and different, well not cultures, different environments other than our own. I think it was a very wise decision on your part. What about your parents? A little uh, nervous about you leaving uh, Michigan and Grand Rapids? No, I don't think so, as long no. as I come back. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to another question. When you finish your four-year degree, uh, do you think you'll come back to uh, Grand Rapids? Yes, I think I will. Oh, there will be a lot of employers that will be very happy to see you when you come back here. What advice would you have, uh, Deb, for any incoming freshman here at JC? Uh, you've been through the system now three years, changed curriculums. What advice would you have for them? I would say that a very important thing is to decide upon your curriculum and what classes you need and who to, and to get a counselor and talk to them and work with them all through your through your mm -hmm. career at JC. I think that's excellent advice. To uh, They're going to need help as they go through, and the help is here, and seek out that help, right? Yes. <laughs> Can you believe our time is up already? Huh? <laughs> it just flew by. I wish we had a few more moments to talk, but we don't. So uh, I want to thank you very much for being on our show. Well, thank you. Next on The Job Show, we're going to be highlighting some of the openings that are currently available at the placement office.
What you have just seen is a sampling of jobs that come into our office on a regular routine basis. As a matter of fact, on a, on a monthly basis, we average between four and 500 job openings. So uh, aside from uh, those jobs coming in there, and what Shirley and I are going to share with you right now, it's a darn good idea to get down and see us anytime you can at the placement office. Shirley, you have the first job. Thank you, Jim. The first job I'd like to discuss will be that of a camp nurse. It's a full-time summer opportunity, which involves 24-hour nursing care to camp personnel. The camp is located near the Gun Lake area. The person will provide emergency medical attention when needed to staff persons. The qualifications is that they should be a certified LPN or RN. The hours are Monday through Friday, and it begins June 13th through August 22nd. The salary for three months is twelve to fourteen thousand. Sounds like an opp opportunity for good pay and also some recreational activities. My first job opening is a diesel mechanic. It's a full-time position. This person must be able to tear down uh, diesel engines and do general repair work and also uh, be able to repair transmissions on these uh, big rigs. An absolute must as far as qualifications is a two-year certificate from a training program and you also must own your own tools. Now this particular uh, job opening is the second shift from 3.30 to midnight and the starting uh, hourly rate on this particular job is $9.32 an hour. The next job I'd like to talk about is a quality control lab technician. It's a full-time job. The major responsibilities entail mixing and testing vinyl compounds, analyzing balances of pigment liquids, and will make also injection molding plaques. The qualifications, there is no experience necessary. However, the candidate should have an associate's in plastics technology. The person will be trained on the first shift, 7 to 3.30, but will transfer to a permanent working arrangement from 3.30 to 11. Sounds like a good opportunity for a fresh grad. The salary is $12,000. However, it may increase depending on previous experience. My next job is for an office manager in a dentist office. It's a full-time position and this person will be involved with scheduling appointments, uh, bookkeeping duties, billings, uh, taking care of the insurance forms, reception work, and at times even doing some chairside assisting. It's quite a comprehensive job and I think it would be a, a great challenge uh, to anyone. Uh, what this particular dentist is looking for is uh, somebody with an associate degree in, in the secretarial studies or in the business area. Uh, and they also, the person must be able to type 45 to 50 words a minute. Now we're talking about a job that uh, is from 8 to 5 on a daily basis and the starting uh, rate of pay is $6 an hour but something else that's very important with this job is that this dentist is offering a full benefit package. I think it'd be a great opportunity for somebody to get in on the ground floor. I have a part-time temporary assignment which is approximately a week to two weeks. It's that of a key line person. This person will paste up lettering and designs on a variety of assignments. Uh, they should have some freelance experience and some coursework in art. Uh, I would imagine that this person should be very detail oriented and have an eye for organization and layout. The hours are from 8 to 3, Monday through Friday. However, it may involve some weekend work. The salary is from $6.50 to $8 an hour, depending on previous exposure. This next job offering is for an injection molding engineer. Once again, this is a job in the plastics industry, and it's an industry that is just going gangbusters all over the country, not just here in, in West Michigan. It's a full-time job. This person is going to be responsible for setting up and repairing all of the plastic injection molding machines. Uh, this person must have an associate degree uh, and the experience to go with that. It's also a, uh, a first or second shift offering by this particular employer. The salary range is anywhere from eight to uh, eleven dollars an hour. Now here's the thing that I've kept right for the end. Uh, this particular opening, believe it or not, is from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. That's the kind of 
thing that's happening in the plastic industry throughout this com uh, country. They're calling Grand Rapids Junior College all the way from New Jersey. The next position I'd like to talk about is a supermarket merchandiser. It's a full-time permanent opening. The person will be visiting various stores in the local area to ensure correct product distribution and display arrangements. There's no experience necessary, but you must have your own transportation. They will train you. The hours are from 8 to 4, Monday through Friday. The salary is $175 a week plus a bonus. There is also a car allowance included. The next job uh, offering is for telemarketing. Once again, this is another one of those uh, job opportunities. It's a, it's a hot area as far as jobs are concerned. It seems to be more and more companies getting into telemarketing and doing that as a, as a form of marketing. This particular job, though, is uh, it's a part-time job and it's of a tempora temporary nature, lasting about 45 days. This person will be calling uh, Christian bookstores and setting up sales by use of a catalog and, and working with uh, these different contacts. Leads will be provided, so that's not a problem as far as a person doing it. This kind of an of a opportunity would be, uh, I think, very good for somebody who has never done this before, and it would almost be like a training kind of a, of a uh, program for somebody, somebody to get into it and really try it. Uh, the only real qualification is somebody that has good communication skills. The job is from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and the starting rate of pay, which is an average for this kind of a job, is $5 an hour. I'd like to share with you uh, the position of accounting clerk, full-time permanent position. The job description involves all accounts receivable and payable transactions, will handle bank deposits, do a minimal amount of typing, some CRT and data entry work. The qualifications is that the person should have some computer exposure. It's helpful, but it's not required. Uh, the employer is willing to work around one or two classes if the person is enrolled in school. The hours are 8 to 5 and $5 an hour depending on experience. However, merit increments will be given. Our next job is a staff assistant in an insurance company. This is a part-time opening. Uh, some of the duties that will be involved with this job are data entry, filing, mailings, uh, preparing reports, and other general duties. One of the things I mentioned right up front is data entry, and some people get scared with that. They don't know anything about computers, but you'll find out in most cases uh, employers will train you in that particular aspect of the job. This person must, however, be able to type 45 to 50 words a minute. Uh, we'll be using the dictaphone at times, and there's another area where an employer will usually train on and to have some good communication skills, obviously. There'll be 20 to 25 hours a week uh, on this particular job, and it's a first shift kind of a thing. It's $5 an hour to start, plus uh, merit increases. The last position that I'd like to talk about is that of a data billing clerk. It's a full-time summer opportunity. The major functions are data entry work, some inventory responsibilities, invoicing of orders and handling reports. The person should be involved in an accounting curriculum or maybe some bookkeeping experience. The hours are from 8 to 5, Monday through Friday, and $5 an hour is the salary. This ne next job, I'm going to put it into the fun category. It's an usher. It's an usher for a group that uh, books concerts throughout West Michigan. Some of the concerts that are already booked and or planned for West Michigan are uh, the Beach Boys, the Statler Brothers, the Pointer Sisters, Billy Ocean, and Z Top, whoever they are. I don't have no idea who they are. We're talking about primarily weekends. It's temporary, part-time, of course. A minimum of four hours uh, will be given to any of these people uh, as ushers on the weekend. We're talking four to four fifty an hour. As I said right in the beginning, it's a fun kind of a job. That concludes the job segment of our show. So if you're a job seeker looking for employment, or an employer looking to hire someone, please give us a call at the placement office. Thank you for joining us on The Job Show.